what's up guys it's Shay and welcome to my channel if you're new and welcome back to my channel if you've been here before and if you're constantly coming to my channel and you're watching my videos just you know subscribe you know and click the bell icon so that you're notified when I come out with new videos I know I typically say that at the end of my videos but I decided to try saying it at the beginning now one of you lovely people actually had a suggestion of like have I ever actually talked about any shoujo anime that I feel are really underrated and I realized I don't think I've ever done this video before and I've seen a lot of shoujo anime. Like I've said before in another video, shoujo anime is one of my favorite genres so why not talk about some favorites that I have that I feel are kind of underrated. Now for me my definition of underrated is that I don't hear a lot of people talking about these anime. Now I mean they might have been talked about before when they might have first came out but as of right now I don't really hear about them a lot. So. Let's get started. The first anime I have is called Ashitiru's Baby. Now I watched this anime when I was still in college actually and pretty much the anime is about a boy by the name of Kipei who pretty much ends up taking care of his little cousin Yuzuru who was pretty much abandoned or left there by her mother. So Kipei is kind of a playboy but he ends up finding a girl that he actually really does like and it's really really cute because of the romance going on between Kipei and this girl and you see him really maturing as he has to take care of Yuzuru. Definitely recommend it. I don't remember how many episodes it is, but I do know that by the end of this anime, I was like, this is so cute, and I oh, I just wish more people knew about this anime. The next anime I have is Full Moon Wo Sagashite, which is pretty much about a girl named Mitsuki who has a friend named Eichi. And Eichi ends up moving away to America, and they decide they want to fulfill their dreams, even though they're so far away from each other. They hope that one day they can, you know, reunite and pretty much have fulfilled both of their dreams. Now, Eichi's dream is to become an astronomer, and Mitsuki's dream is to become a singer. The only problem, though, is that Mitsuki actually has throat cancer, so she speaks in a very soft voice, so singing for her is out of the question. And to make matters worse, her grandmother dislikes music and wants Mitsuki to have a surgery for her cancer. But the risks are that she may not be able to talk again. So one day, two Shinigami by the name of Moroko and Takuto pretty much help her to try and fulfill their dreams. So I believe they kind of age her up and they help her to pretty much become a singer. And it's this tale of her kind of standing up for herself and becoming her own and also ultimately fulfilling that dream. So I know that the anime, though, only actually as far as I have read, is that it only followed the manga for the very first episode and after that it took a completely different route. And Viz actually did license this show, but they only actually came out with about 28 episodes and then pretty much dropped it. And then I do know at one point Hulu though did have the entire series up there subtitled but it expired in August I believe of 2013. So at this point I don't know where you can watch it. I do know that I only watched it up to a certain point and then after that it was like not even finished. It wasn't completed. There, It didn't have any English subtitles. Let me just say that. So I wasn't able to actually finish it. I do at some point do plan to read the manga after finding out that the anime doesn't follow the manga as closely as I thought it did. And I do have to say that the music in this show was amazing. I still have a lot of the songs actually on my phone and they're amazing. So I definitely do recommend watching this show. So the next show I have is La Corda de Oro and pretty much this is the very first season of it. I know that there are like multiple seasons of this show but I'm specifically only talking about the first season. So there's a group of students that actually go to the school called Say So Academy. I believe I'm saying that correctly but I'm probably not. So there's, there's two studies going on at the school. There's music studies and general studies and there's a girl by the name of Kohoko who of course is in the general stories club course. She ends up coming across a fairy by the name of Lily who is actually looking for someone who can actually see her. And because of this she gifts Kohoko with a magical violin. So of course every year at the school there's a musical competition and of course all the people involved are from the musical stories course until they actually call Kohoko's name. So Kohoko ends up having to compete in this musical competition and there's all these boys that are also competing. So of course this is a reverse harem also. 
but she all the boys end up starting to show some interest in Kahoko and I loved this show I really liked it because I really enjoy a classical music for a long time not a long time but for two years I actually did play violin so for me for me hearing like violin music and flutes and piano and all these musical instruments and seeing as people play it I loved it and I didn't find out until later on when I had after I had watched this show that a lot of the people that played the music in the show uh are also like voiced the characters I guess and I believe I'm correct about that I might be though might be incorrect though I do apologize though if I am but I greatly enjoyed the show and I believe you can still watch the show on Crunchyroll, but like I said, I don't hear a lot of people talking about the show. I know at one point a lot of people kind of did, or I knew of some people that did, had watched it, but now at this point, I rarely hear anything about this show. The next show I have is called Rin Does the Mimasa. Now this show is about a girl by the name of Rin who is what's something called an immortal. And she's also a private eye, so she's like a badass. But pretty much she's trying to solve this mystery and she's an immortal due to something called a time fruit. So you learn more about time fruits throughout the show as it goes on and Rin can't die. So there's multiple times in the show that she will die. So I have to say that this show is kind of mature. It has a lot of sexual content in it. It has a lot of violence in it. So if you are someone who is sensitive to those kinds of things, I don't recommend watching this show. Also, the time fruits that you learn more about it, you learn that when women absorb them, they become immortal. When men absorb them, they become something called angels, but not your typical angels. These are some other like crazy looking creatures that are just called angels, but they're not what you think of as angels. I liked this show. I was actually surprised this show was a shoujo because it's also really sci-fi and mysterious of a show, very dark of a show. But it is kind of a shoujo show now that I think about it because Rin and the main male character do have something for each other, although you're not for sure what it is. And also, I do have to say that this show was actually, I believe, licensed by Funimation, so it is dubbed, and I believe each episode is like 45 minutes long. So it's like a mini movie for every single episode, and it's like four episodes, if I'm correct. Yeah, when I watched it, it was four episodes. So definitely recommend watching it, but once again, if you're sensitive to nudity or violence, I do not recommend watching it. And the last and final show I have is called Da Da Da. D-A-A, D-A-A, D-A-A. So Da 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 is about a girl by the name of Miu who is in eighth grade and whose parents leave her behind because they work for NASA. But they don't leave her completely behind. They actually leave her with a babysitter by the name of Mr. Sionji. But Mr. Sionji decides to head to India for a year-long trip. But when he decides to leave her behind on this year-long trip, he leaves behind his own son named Kanata. Now, she kind of already has a crush on Kanata, but things get a little bit more complicated when a baby from outer space, along with his babysitter, is a crash landing. And to make matters worse, the baby starts calling Miu mom and Kanata dad. I love this show. It was so, so cute. But once again, with this show, I just, I feel like I remember distinctly or I can't completely remember, but I believe there was something going on with why I couldn't actually fully complete the show and I end up actually having to really complete it by reading the manga. And then even reading the manga, there was a certain point where I couldn't read it anymore because <laughs> it wasn't translated into English. And I believe the same thing kind of happened with the anime, if I remember, is that it just wasn't completed because there was no one to dub it or subtitle it into English. And yes, this was during the time when I was broke, so I couldn't afford to watch anything on a subscription service at the time. But I really did enjoy that show. I enjoyed the manga. I thought it was really sweet. I thought it was really, really cute. And it was also really funny and really comedic because the baby babysitter was hilarious. But I definitely recommend watching this show if you're able to find it. I don't know where you can find it at this point because like I said, this was years ago that I actually found this show online and started binge watching it, but then never got a chance to complete it. So those are the five shows that I would recommend, or those are the five. Uh, so those are the five shoujo anime that I feel are really underrated. I don't hear people talk about them anymore. Half of them aren't even completed 
because people just didn't have an interest in them. So I feel like, you know, some of these shows do need a second chance. Uh, like Full Moon, Will Saga Shite. I know that the manga is available on Viz, but I still feel like the anime should have gotten a gotten another shot or like I want to mention most of these anime that I watched um, I watched at a time period that I was kind of broke um, at the time I was in college when I watched most of these shows so most of these shows that I watched I didn't watch through the licensing sources such as Funimation for Rin so I do recommend please watching them on there um, if they're available as well because I don't want anybody getting any kind of trouble but yeah that's what I have for you guys today. Comment down below your thoughts on what shoujo anime you feel are really underrated. I know that there's a lot of shows that people um, felt were underrated that I could have mentioned, like Marmalade Boy, because I loved Marmalade Boy. Like that show was like a whole roller coaster ride of emotions. But I could have mentioned that and Kaze Kano and uh, or uh, Kari Kano, I believe is what it's called. I'm probably incorrect with that pronunciation, but I apologize. But that's what I have for you guys. Like I said, I'll have links down below though to my social media accounts, my Instagram, my Twitter, my blog, so please check me out on there. And of course, uh, give this video a thumbs up if you like or a thumbs down if you didn't like it. It lets me know what you guys want to see next on my channel or what you guys are more interested in. And of course, please subscribe if you haven't already. Of course, like always, like I always tell you guys, stay positive, stay nerdy, and in today's day and age, stay healthy and stay safe. Alright you guys.